Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 15th of April. Weekend curfew imposed in New Delhi as India's daily COVID-19 cases breached 200,000. Pakistan bans radical Islamist party after violent protests. And President Biden announces end of troop deployment to Afghanistan, NATO allies to leave with US. And now for all the details. India reported over 200,000 COVID-19 cases on Thursday, the seventh record daily increase in the last eight days. The worst hit among all in India remained the Western Maharashtra state, contributing for about a quarter of the country's total cases. Citing the rise in infection cases, capital New Delhi also announced a weekend curfew, ordering shutting off all non-essential services. India on Thursday reported 200,739 COVID-19 cases over the last 24 hours, the seventh record daily increase in the last eight days, with its worst hit Maharashtra state contributing for about a quarter of the country's total cases. Hospitals and doctors in Maharashtra as well as other regions, including Gujarat and Delhi, in the north reported chaotic scenes as healthcare facilities were overwhelmed with a spurge in admissions of COVID-19 patients. However, while announcing a weekend curfew to curb the virus spread in the capital, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal assured there is no shortage of beds in hospitals. Delhi, which reported 17,282 fresh cases of COVID-19 on Wednesday, a day prior to the curfew announcement, will now be allowing only essential activities like weddings planned already. Weekend के ऊपर curfew दिल्ली के अंदर लगाया जाएगा. इसका कारण ये है कि लगभग हफ्ते के दौरान, working days के दौरान आदमी को अपनी कमाई करने के लिए जाना होता है, आदमी को अपने काम पे जाना होता है। लेकिन वीकेंड में अक्सर जो लोग निकलते हैं, वो अपने एंटरटेनमेंट के लिए या दूसरी एक्टिविटीज के लिए निकलते हैं, जो कि कटेल की जा सकती है। Meanwhile, amid calls for stringent measures, the religious gathering of the Kumbh Fair is going on as usual. Even after over thousand attendees were reported positive for COVID-19 on Thursday. Hundreds of devotees are visiting northern Haridwar city to take holy dips in the Ganges considered auspicious during the ongoing festival. Foreign Minister of Maldives Abdullah Shahid on Wednesday evening arrived in India on a two-day trip to bolster bilateral ties. He will be meeting his Indian counterpart Dr. S.J. Shankar on Friday and hold discussions on bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest. Shahid will also participate in the Raisana Dialogue, India's flagship conference on geopolitics and geoeconomics in a virtual mode in sessions on financing for sun and global public health after the pandemic. Maldives is India's key maritime neighbour in the Indian Ocean and occupies a central and special place in the Prime Minister's vision of Sagar, security and growth for all in the region. Shahid's visit is expected to lend further momentum to the close bilateral cooperation between the two countries. Pakistan on Thursday banned hardline Islamist party Tehreek e Labbaik in Pakistan under the country's anti-terrorism laws. This came after violent protests by the group this week over the detention of its leader, who had threatened to hold rallies denouncing cartoons that mocked the Prophet Muhammad in France. Meanwhile, the Embassy of France had advised all French citizens and companies to temporarily leave Pakistan due to serious threats. 
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and the Federal Cabinet on Thursday outlawed hardline far-right Islamist party TLP, the Tehreek-e-Labaik Pakistan, under the country's anti-terrorism laws after violent protests by the group, which killed at least seven people, including two police personnel. Thousands of Pakistani Islamists had clashed with police earlier this week in protest against the arrest of their leader, Saad Hussein Rizvi. Ahead of rallies denouncing French cartoons that mocked the Prophet Muhammad. For Muslims, depictions of the Prophet are blasphemous. The TLP had been demanding that the government expel the French ambassador and endorse a boycott of French products. Paramilitary troops were deployed overnight to clear the protests by TLP supporters, who blocked rail tracks, highways, and entry and exit routes to all major cities. The government on Wednesday said it has arrested 1,400 workers of the group while informing that at least 340 police were wounded after being assaulted and abducted at some places. Rizvi has been charged with instigating murder. However, the TLP is backed by a major Sunni sect of Islam with a following of tens of thousands that will make it difficult to enforce any ban. In the latest, the Embassy of France in Pakistan on Thursday advised all French citizens and companies to temporarily leave the country due to serious threats on French interests. Moving on, locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have blamed government's negligence for deteriorating condition of bridges and roads in the illegally occupied territory. They blame the poor infrastructure has also made the region out of bounds for tourist and affected connectivity. Locals in illegally occupied territory of Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented government's apathy to repair and maintain suspension bridges and roads, which has adversely affected the tourism sector and travelling itself is a difficult task for even them. Residents in Giza district demanded the newly established Pakistan Tehreek and Saf government should reconstruct suspension bridges in remote areas, some of which were built during the British rule and are now in a dilapidated condition. The poor road infrastructure has also made the region out of bounds for tourist and affected connectivity. Locals blame nearly seven decades of Pakistan's illegal occupation has pushed Gilgit Baltistan into the most neglected, backward, and poorest area in the South Asia region. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. President Joe Biden has said it is time to end America's longest war in Afghanistan, a responsibility which he does not want to pass on to his successor. Biden on Wednesday said India, Pakistan, Russia, China and Turkey have a significant stake in the stable future of Afghanistan and these regional stakeholders should do more to bring peace in this war-torn country, from where he will withdraw all American troops by September 11. U.S. President Joe Biden declared on Wednesday he plans to end the longest U.S. war and that it is time for American troops to come home from Afghanistan as he looks to close out 20 years of U.S. military involvement there, even as critics warn that peace is not assured. In a White House speech, Biden set a goal of withdrawing all 2,500 U.S. troops remaining in Afghanistan no later than September 11, with the final withdrawal beginning on May 1. In September 11, 2001, Al-Qaeda terrorists based in Afghanistan attacked the Twin Towers in New York, prompting then-President George Bush to launch the conflict. After consulting closely with our allies and partners, with our military leaders and intelligence personnel, with our diplomats and our development experts, with the Congress and the Vice President, as well as with Mr. Ghani and many others around the world, I've concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. 
Soon after Biden's announcement, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said, Afghanistan must construct a safe country for its citizens as NATO withdraws its military forces from the country after 20 years. Stoltenberg speaking alongside U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the withdrawal would be completed within a few months. Afghan designers and artisans in capital Kabul are getting a boost from a locally grown e-commerce platform that connects them with the customers around the world, an important opportunity for the war-torn economy. Experts said that despite poverty, corruption and poor infrastructure creating setbacks for Afghan e-commerce. It would give women greater opportunities to break into the world of business in the conservative society. Afghan designers and artisans in capital Kabul are getting a boost from a locally grown e-commerce platform that connects them with customers around the world, an important opportunity for the war-torn economy. E-commerce site Click.af started in 2016 to give Afghans access to an online marketplace. Last year it began shipping globally. The main reason for the global expansion was to connect the Afghan designers and artisans to a much larger base of global consumers, mainly diaspora Afghans living in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany and Australia. Economists said that despite poverty, corruption and poor infrastructure creating setbacks for Afghan e-commerce, it would give women greater opportunities to break into the world of business in the conservative society. Customers say online shopping can prevent being caught up in some of the ongoing threats related to security and harassment in the country like Afghanistan. In an effort to contain a surge in new coronavirus cases, the Bangladesh government has announced a day-long complete lockdown in the country from Wednesday. People in Dhaka shopped for food to break fast and distributed food packets on Wednesday, which marked the first day of Ramadan in the country amid a coronavirus lockdown. People in the Bangladeshi capital of Dhaka shopped for food to break fast and distributed food packets on Wednesday, which marked the first day of Ramadan in the country amid coronavirus lockdown. Despite the majority of shops being closed, some wayside stalls briefly opened to sell produce and fried foods for iftar. Mosque volunteers handed out food to those unable to buy food to break the fast. The lockdown began on Wednesday morning and is set to last for eight days. People have been told to pray at home rather than gathering at mosques and both domestic and international travel curtailed. Police were out at check stops as streets appeared empty and boats idled on the Buriganga River, forcing some to carry their goods on foot. Lockdown is a car is not a car. The it comes as the country reported a record 96 virus-related deaths on Wednesday. So far, the country has reported 703,170 cases and 9,987 deaths. Sri Lankans on Wednesday marked the start of the Sinhalese and Tamil New Year amid East coronavirus restrictions. Devotees flocked to Hindu and Buddhist temples to pray and brought firecrackers, which were set off by revelers on New Year's to mark the holiday. Sri Lankans on Wednesday marked the start of the Sinhalese and Tamil New Year amid these coronavirus restrictions. Devotees flocked to Hindu and Buddhist temples on Tuesday evening to pray just ahead of the holiday. Locals also bought firecrackers. Firecrackers are set off by revelers on New Year's to mark the holiday. We take a great privilege to see that we are able to spend our New Year with all our loved ones 
and in peace and prosperity. As we could not celebrate last year, being a con pandemic thing due to the COVID-19. In 2020, celebrations for the biggest holiday of the year were banned due to the pandemic. The Sri Lankan government had appealed to the population this time to keep the celebrations confined to close family members and friends and avoid large crowds during the holiday. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.